So if you can see my screen, if you can hear my voice, that's good. Can you guys see my screen? I started sharing it. Maybe just take a minute to pop up. But it will be should be able to see an Excel file. Can you see my screen? Masi, go ahead. I believe you can see my screen from your Yes. Okay, okay. Go ahead. So just a small question. Uh -huh. If I want to reference, I select the cell, then I press the while you're inside, you see, F and then F four. Yes, while you're inside the the cell, uh, you see when the cursor is blinking anywhere besides inside the cell itself, and then you press F N F four. There are some whose F four work directly. There are some who are, who have to use the F N then the F four button. So it just depends on how your machine is. So if I want to reference this cell, I can come here. And just press F N F four. It will still give me. You must be somewhere within within that cell, either in front of it, inside it, or after it, but within that cell. All right. I don't sir. Okay, I'm saying when you want to enter now your absolute reference or maybe your mixed reference, right? Uh, we said instead one way is to use the dollar sign, which I'm doing right now. I'm just going to my keyboard, typing in the dollar sign. Okay, that is one, right? Let's see how we can do C20 now using the shortcuts. When you when you want to reference C20 without without typing in the dollar sign, you can always use the FN button and press F4 once. You can press it twice depending on what you want to to lock. Okay, so maybe you want to lock the row, maybe you want to lock the column. Maybe you want to leave it freely, the FN button will, the FN F4 button will help you, or the F4 for some specific computers. But for you to do that, you must be maybe on your formula bar, you must be somewhere uh, after the cell that you have written. Like if you can see clearly where my cursor is blinking, I don't know if you guys can see clearly. We'll just try to zoom out a little bit so that uh, you. Oh, well. Yeah, it was here. So if you can see where my cursor is blinking, right there is where you have your, you can now insert your, your reference. So if just the same way you'll have typed inside uh, the cell, uh, you just now uh, use the FN. Okay. So thank you, Marcy, for that question. I think uh, there being no other question, I ask. Or is there any other question so that they don't leave anybody out with their query? Because now I said, remember, guys, we're building up on knowledge. The small things that we have been learning. Remember, we started with the introduction. We did the what every part of this ribbon part mean. All right. We got to know what you can do with everything. Then now uh, on the second day, which was yesterday. We went, uh, we digged in a little bit deeper into how you can do a few things, maybe just like locking the cells. Uh, you can do a little bit of formatting. Um, we also got to, to see the different scoping styles or pasting styles that you have. There are some styles that you can use, such as you copy everything as a value in which uh, you go ahead and remove all the formulas that, all the formulas and formats that are uh, from the source format. Uh, source and then we also saw how you can copy as formula in which you only uh, the only thing that is copied is the formula uh the other things uh like formats do not get copied when you copy something as a formula then we went ahead and saw uh how you can copy something as formats only in here so everything else is left behind only the format is only the format comes to, to be okay then in the next place uh, on the formatting, we saw how to transpose some something. Okay, you can copy as a transpose in which uh, your data might be like this. Now you want to transport it, transpose it so that the rows become the columns and the columns become the rows. That is what we did exactly here. All right. So that was keen to note yesterday after the, the one introduction. We also got to to see a few things on data validation yesterday. 
Uh, remember, we said there are different types of validations that you can always create. Um, for example, uh, here we went ahead and created a validation based on an, an existing list. And guys, if you can remember, the list that we used was the phone name. So you can always check where your validation is speaking from. Uh, you can just go to the data validation and uh, check the check the check check the list. Okay, so that is okay. Uh, uh, we went, uh, we used a list. Then the next thing we, we saw, uh, we used a validation. Guys, I hope you have seen here on the list how you can check where your validation is speaking from. So you just go back to the data validation, then right click inside the range. Okay. We'll get to see what is a range today. Okay. But now we are discussing about structured tables. Okay. Then our structured tables will build up to uh, whatever we learn on on pivot tables. Okay. All right. Are we together? Yes, we are together. Okay. So in the phone amount, we used a validation in which uh, we used a validation in which we used a whole number and we, we limit it between a few numbers, between a minimum and a, and a maximum, okay? That's what we did at that point. Then here on the third point, we used validation in which uh, in which we specified uh, the text length, all right? So we said uh, we needed a phone whose name length was between three and six characters, okay? So we said when somebody tries to put in something else here, yeah, maybe like a, maybe like a Samsung, it will, it will automatically deny him the access because you have limited the characters to be between only three to six. And then there was a question which was asked by, I think, by Joel, in which he asked, so what if I don't want to, to be seeing the drop down and I have my list? We said that's well and good. You can always uh, go to the data validation and uh, and remove the, the cell, in cell drop down, All right? Okay, so that was majorly about validation i hope you guys are you guys able to go and create some of some of the validations on your own i want to see responses in my chat box tell me you did did you experience any challenge okay so i'm waiting to see if anybody tried to create maybe a validation and uh they faced any challenge or anything of that sort Okay, I don't see anything. My chat. Did you guys really try? Yes, you did. Okay, did it work well? Yeah, mine did. Mine worked. Okay, that's nice. That's nice to hear. I want such a such such a such a thing. Okay, because. Once we learn here, remember, it might seem so simple when I'm doing it, but when you do it, uh, you might find that it's, it's, it's still simple, yes, but you might find a challenge here or there. So it's really good when you do something here, you try go replicate it on your own. So we went on to uh, do the, the referencing in which we discussed three types of referencing yesterday in which you said by default, Excel has a relative reference on each and every cell, which means that uh, these cells are not locked. In a layman language, you said uh, these cells are necessarily not locked. So when you when you check any cell, for example, we used, uh, this is what we are using for example today. So I just removed the dollar sign. So when you check uh, on this cell, and we said maybe you'll drag it down for it just to give you a clear picture of what happens. 
uh, maybe you had a formula adding two cells, this and that, but when you drag it down, it no longer adds maybe whatever you wanted, but now moves on to the next cell because these cells are not uh, restricted; they are not locked by any by any uh, any 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 form of uh, reference. Okay, so we said maybe at times you have uh, maybe one price in which you want to shift across, maybe an incremental value here. You can always use um, the absolute reference to make uh, to make uh, to make your uh, one part fix, and then it can be added to all the incremental values. And then uh, yeah, just that. Uh, something else that I was in uh, we we looked at yesterday as the class was ending in which is one in which you used a mixed reference. Well, we said the mixed reference uh, entails locking one part and leaving the other part as a relative reference. So on one part it's up, uh, locked absolutely, and the, on the other one part of the cell, uh, it it does not have a, a reference. Case in point, we used a one formula just to fill this table, in which he said if you try to not lock uh, uh, some parts of this, it won't work correctly. And we tried the case in different scenarios. And we got to see what, what happens when you lock all of them, what happens when you lock only one part. So that was that. Okay. So here on the C32, uh, we got to see that uh, we locked the column because we wanted all the phone prices to be to be multiplied by a certain discount. Then on the D, we wanted all the discounting factors to multiply our, our phone prices. So that's why we ended up locking our column and on the C32 and locking our row on the D32, all right? So guys, did you try to replicate this table and use the formula? Yeah, that is, uh, that will be a very nice thing because uh, you will get to now see how you can, you can be using your reference. Remember here, this might just be an example. In real life uh, case in which we'll see when even building our formulas, you might not necessarily need to know that I need to lock this. I need, you just need to look at what I'm, what I'm changing, which part uh, do I need to change and which part needs to remain constant. Okay. So also for the referencing guys, were you able to try it out? Yeah, like for me, I just tried it right now before we started the class and it worked perfectly well. Yeah, thank you for that. Anybody else? Did you succeed in ensuring that your references are well, especially the mixed references was a key concern to me because it can be a little bit confusing to on where to 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 really place your 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 your, your references. Okay, so today we'll look at tables a little bit uh, and get to see what are tables, what is a structured table. Uh, because this is just a small part because we'll get to expound more on tables as we go on to the pivot table. So we wanted just maybe this week we introduce all the basic uh, things so as a building block to what we, we will cover next week. Next week we'll build on on, on, on tables now uh, going on to pivot tables, maybe going on to pivot charts and all that, all those things that all those things that can be associated with. All right. So, who has an idea of what a table is? Who, who a structured table? Anybody who has an idea of what a structured table is? Or, uh, or something with a table reference, okay? So, yesterday, we got to see, uh, remember, we have gone through the, the references in which we have seen. We have uh, absolute. We have seen we have uh, uh, we have relative, and we have seen mixed. Now we're going to see another type of the, uh, of um, referencing in which we use a table reference. Okay, so table reference are very good in terms of uh, once you create a table, uh, you can be able to to add columns with formulas, and they will pick automatically. All right. So from the notes, we can see that uh, this is a special way of referencing tables and their parts that uses combination of the table and the column names instead of the 
cell addresses. So first of all, let's create a table before even going to their references. Okay, so I'll ask everybody to go now to the what we call the smartphone data. I want us to copy some part of the data. Go and create a table with it. Okay, so they we use maybe 20. We keep progressing. Yesterday we were using 10. Let's use 20, 20 rows today. Create a small table inside our new worksheet. Okay, so you'll copy that. Okay, so uh, as everybody copied the first 20 rows in their on their on their new worksheet. So if you have done that, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I'll show you how to insert a table in 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 arrange data. Arrange data. Arrange data is uh data that has not been uh put inside a, a table okay so range is data that has not been put inside a table like this when i select all this is just uh, when you select maybe from c2 to c20 this is just a free it's, a, it's just a range so it's just a range uh but now when i put it in a table it will be under the sales price column okay so how do we insert a table should be the next question how we insert a table there are two ways two major ways to insert a table one we can always use the the formula okay so when you want to use sorry i will start first with the ribbon and then go to the formula okay because ribbon is the most conventional formula is just a a quick tip to because maybe you might be needed to insert tables so that you can go ahead and maybe insert a pivot table okay so how do you insert a table? You will now select your data. Once you have copied it somewhere, you select it. Okay. Down. Once you select this, you go to the insert ribbon. All right. Once you go to the insert ribbon, you'll always see a place, a return table. Okay. And it, it, it gives you the shortcut already, which is control T. So the one way is just clicking there. It will ask you, where is the data for your table? It will confirm the ranges from A1 to O20. Okay. This who is lost. I lost my. Uh, the data is still in the group. Can you access the group? Because maybe coming out of uh, the meeting, my uh, Chris, uh, tell me if you're able to access the group so that I know how to sort you. Because the data I sent there. So here, here once you select, okay, I'll just maybe I'll start again so that we don't lose anybody. So here, when you go and select all your data, maybe just like that, then come highlight it. Uh, remember, we are just dragging, you're just hovering the mouse over it. Uh, now highlighting, so you do that, then you go to insert, you can insert a table. And then you can press OK. So it will always ask you. Sorry, I didn't insert the whole range. So there, then go to insert table. Does your table have headers? Yes. Then you press OK. All right. As is everybody able to insert a table? No. Uh, let me just try resending the data to Chris so that you can follow through. Uh, yes, somebody has a uh, Okay, okay, all right. Thank you, Bon, for that. Uh, so here you have a table already, right? As you can see, this table for those who have not seen a table, that's how a table looks in Excel, and we'll get to see how it's um, it's referencing how the structure referencing in a table is quite different from the one that we had in a, in a range, okay? So here. Uh, the the best practice is always to have your table names in all your tables. All right. So once you go to once you go to design, once you go to this, uh, once you create a table, there'll always be another ribbon here that will pop up known as design. Once you click anywhere inside the table, so here I want to rename our table. You can see here there's a table name. You can always rename your table to maybe. Um, reference you can just name it anything that you want and that now will be the uh will be the name of the table um going forward okay so because you might have many tables maybe 
uh, you don't want you don't want to be having cable one, cable two, cable three, just uh, as they're named. Uh, but it's always good to, to 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 name your tables in such a way that you can uh, that you can easily understand what why you are creating that table. All right. So the first thing first, uh, that was the first way of creating a table. The other way, I just create two tables, one down here using the other way so that we just go together. I'll go to my 20 rows of data. Select, copy. Uh, remember I'm copying everything just as it was. I'll just go down here, but I'm going to delete this table. This is just for, for maybe just for explanation that once you highlight the whole range of data that you want to, to, to insert a table inside, you can always quickly press Control T. It will still bring you up. It will bring up the top up uh, the the dialog box or the pop up. When you press OK, it will still create a table in the same way as a person who had used the ribbon. So you can go ahead uh, under the design button, rename your table, and all that. Okay. So as everybody inserted a table inside the worksheet, you can just type yes or tell me if you have done and if you're having a challenge. Because that is a very basic step. Nobody should be able to, to miss it, All right? I'll just confirm that everybody is able to, uh, to maybe, yeah, Dorka says yes, Massey Faith says yes. So that's, that's a nice thing. So, I want, do one thing just to show you what happens, all right? I'll say, I'll, I'll write an equal sign inside my worksheet and reference one of these, okay? And press okay, all right? Let me just add a problem here, maybe average. Okay, just if you're lost, just a minute, Hilda will pick you where you are. Don't worry. Uh, Hilda, uh, sorry, Hilda, were you able to create a table first? That would be the most important part. Were you able to create uh, a table? <laughs> I was downloading the smartphone, and then when I came back, you had already done everything. Okay, so whatever we did, uh, when you open your data, can you be able to copy the first 20 rows? From the smartphone data, you can just create a new worksheet using the plus sign down here, the plus sign. So when you create it, uh, when you when you when you when you press it, it will bring you sheet one, sheet two, uh, depending on the sheet that you are on. Then uh, you copy that data. You copy that. Uh, we said we first just use for explanation purposes. At 20 rows, you copy it, then you create a table using either control T or using the, the insert ribbon. Then you'll see a place written here, table. Okay. Once you press, you create a table, then you can rename your table to remember now I'm in table four because I'd created three more tables on there on the other side. Okay. So he, I hope you are with us. So I'll just delete this one because it's we are not using it. I'll go back. Okay. Hope now. Uh, I hope now you can. Uh, you're able to see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So I'll just go up here and maybe do this. You guys see whatever is on the on cell Q Q two. Can you guys see what is on cell Q two? Yes. Can you see what is in the formula bar? Can anybody see what is now on the formula bar? Yes. Yes, what is it? Yeah. Who, who, might, who might try to tell us? Why is it giving us uh, this type of, of thing? 
it it is writing structured reference do you know what structured reference is at this point is the name of our table right or let's change the name of our table to something more intuitive so that we don't get confused so i'll just go back to my design let's call our table uh, maybe what do we call it uh, smart one smartphones maybe smartphone this is smartphones so look at what the reference can somebody try and see what the reference is now you see the reference changes right it's q2 but inside here okay look how different this is so maybe i'll i'll just equal this to this see what i have here when i equal uh maybe to something that is not on the table all right i hope you guys can have a keen look at the my screen that if i'll just say uh, we have this one here so let me just say this one is equal maybe to even r1 okay now when i highlight r1 what i have in my formula bar is the reference of r1 which is just r and one but when i click inside q2 and i want to check the reference of this i get smartphones at term this is a special way in which tables have a different type of referencing now because it will tell me whatever you're looking for is inside a table called so the first part will always be table the table name then at a certain column okay hope you guys can see that all right is there anybody who cannot see that i don't know how i lost you so can you please repeat from okay. naming the table is everybody uh, everybody is able to change the name of the table or know where you can change the, the table name which is just here okay under the table name you can rename the table to anything that you want or anything that is relevant to the table um the rule of thumb to me is always name it to something very intuitive that uh, won't confuse you later you may name a table and when you look at that uh, reference you don't even know what what you are doing so when you're naming your tables just make them very intuitive to something very simple that you can remember so renaming a table is done under the table name this place under this under this box that we can all see so uh, if you want to rename the table just do that okay so the, the next thing is um uh the next thing is now we said we want to check uh, how different is something when it is in a table in term of, in terms of referencing and when it's not on a, on a table okay that's why you said we want to we just place an equal sign on maybe a cell we are using q2 so we say equal to something inside maybe any cell inside a table okay we press enter okay then we say we'll use something else that is not in the table for example r1 okay so i enter is equals to r1 and check so here when i check the reference here i'll see that now the table referencing uses now as more of a structured referencing or what we call a table reference here remember now we have the table name it tells you whatever you have selected or whatever is inside this q2 which is nairobi comes from the smartphones table and at a certain column okay which is column down okay so this works in a columnar manner so it will always tell you which column you you, you whatever you have selected comes from okay so Excuse me, yeah go ahead I haven't got it I haven't got it you haven't still got it sijapata yeah like your time in kwenda unda tabon kiaka nikiaka tabon kin sat table okay but you will be able to insert a table and rename it because that's one step uh, or rename it yes you can rename it to something more intuitive to you, i mean or to your users okay so imeona penye name okay 
So, yes, so I said, I just wanted us to learn now about the, uh, the other way of referencing or what happens in a table, okay? So, this is what happens in a table, okay? Um, when you select something, okay, just not following through, I'll do it again, maybe for the last time, so that we are all keen and be able to see what I want to, to pass across. What I want to pass across is that when you select something, maybe O2, okay, this is O2. Inside the name box, it gives you O2, but look at when I select it now from, from, the, uh, from the formula bar. It tells me that whatever I have done here is from the smartphones, uh, which now the first part is usually the, the table name. Smartphones was my table name. And then where does your data come from that you have uh, indicated here? It comes from the down column, okay? I would want to show you something else. Hope you have understood my brother so that uh, here you know, when you see something like this, you will always know that this comes from certain table, okay? Okay, so maybe. I'll also explain some type of errors when we get to, to formulas. for that hmm. and something with a number I know we have not looked at the uh, we have not looked at formulas but this is what I'll just want you to check this reference and how it looks inside here just uh i've just told excel to sum everything inside this star rating okay let's say for example this was a column and i want to know all the star ratings that all these phones that we have have ever been given okay more importantly it's not about that more importantly i want to I want you to check at the at the at the reference now you see what happens i selected everything in that column okay so it tells me you have selected data, you're summing data from the smartphones, which is the table, and just told me it's everything in that column, and which column has everything that you want to add is the star rating uh, column, okay? So if I was to check this number, immediately I would know that it comes from the star rating, even if I didn't know how to like go back and maybe see where it came from, I will clearly know that this and whatever has been summed here is uh, from the smartphones table. Okay, all everything on the star rating column has been added. Okay, so this syntax is a little bit different from what we are used to. Remember, uh, whatever we were used to now is maybe referencing it, maybe it has a relative reference, but now this is a little bit different. So, something else about uh, a structured table. What is good about a structured table? Maybe I'll just give you some time to upset that, but I'll show you something else, which is really cool on a structured table. On a structured table, you really have, you don't, um, when you're entering formulas, remember on all the other platforms uh, or all the other worksheets that you are using, you had to uh, drag down your formulas. What happens in a table when you add a column, okay? Say you want to add a column um, that, that shows how many, maybe if these are the number of ratings, number of reviews, how many people, uh, maybe, maybe you we'll just even create a column maybe of sales divided by something like a star rating, okay? Just to see a certain metric, okay? I can come here and just add a column when it says star, I'll call it a uh, sale. Maybe I'll just call it sales of star rating. Okay. So you see, it already inserts another column. Look at what, if I just do this, maybe I'll just go and highlight the sales. You see, I'll just highlight this. I want to divide the, the sales price over there. 
over maybe the star rating and we had as we had alluded when i press okay i just press it at, at one point and excel will now autofill because now it uses the same same referencing to all the cells that are in that table so now it divides everything from at sales price so at will always be at 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 column over at column okay so it's not like how you are doing maybe here I'll just take you back maybe to validation here uh, so you remember here like how we did this formula okay so if I was to insert a formula that now adds 12,000 to everything here, maybe 12,000 and whatever is down here, I'll have to come, say equal this and this, all right? So that I have to drag down my, my, my solution, okay? That is not the same case as table since this now uses a structured reference once, I can delete that once I just come and do uh, just insert what I want, okay? So I want uh, maybe the sales price to be divided by anything, by the market price to see if it was that thing was sold at the market price, okay? Once I do that, it goes, all right? Okay, so same, it applies same to, to formatting, okay? So for example, I'd formatted this uh, cell Remember for the format dialog box, you can always use the control one. So if I'd formatted this to 0%, okay, and I come ahead, I go ahead and maybe divide any two columns that I want to represent as a percentage, this is what will, will happen, okay? And now the rest of the cells, they take the same formatting as what you had indicated in the, in the first cell that you, you are working on. So this is very important maybe when to have a calculation that you want to go through following that uh, following that same procedure that you had used but i don't want to drag down the cells okay so i hope you guys have understood and it's all about i just wanted to bring out now the three aspects in terms of referencing now from the relative from the absolute uh from uh and then you go now to the mix zone then we go to the now uh, the reference is in the, using the table okay so how different is it when you're using inside a table how will be references made references will be made now in terms of columns okay remember when you are using other tools for example like uh say power bi you will not be able to work cell by cell so you'll be able to work only through full column so if you're changing something you have to change something based on a certain column if you're adding things you're adding things based on certain columns so it just like builds up from uh, this table knowledge going. Okay. So I hope you guys have understood that. Unless there's a question, I'll take one or two before we now go maybe to, to formulas because it's quite ex extensive and very, 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 very. Uh... Okay. I see John had a question there. It's like I missed it, but John. John, okay, uh, John had a question on name invalid. I believe, John, you're asking about the name error, okay? Uh, value error. I'll talk about the any error. I think these are the most common errors that you will, will be. Name, value, and any, okay? So that is one question from John, and the other question is uh, Ezekiel Odiambo. And uh, Phoebe, Phoebe, you can just go ahead and ask your question. Okay, sir. I'm trying to... I'm trying to write the formula and it's an error. What's up? Okay, I know... Uh, I didn't want you guys to write formulas already, but it's good if you're doing so. But uh, if you're having an error, which kind of error are you having? I'm being told I'm being told that oh it should be the rules when writing that it, that it should be an underscore no symbols such rules okay did you when you're writing this were you typing these things or you just equal them to did you say I was doing it because that might be another issue when I was adding this column 
I just picked two columns that I wanted to divide. Okay, so I just press the equal sign. I went to one one of the one of the cells in that table. I divided by another cell in that table. Okay, so I didn't type anything because if you start typing the outside bracket at sale price, you might end up missing something. Okay. Hope that answers your question, PB. But if it does not, you can just go ahead and uh maybe tell me so that I get to know. Is okay. So John asked, uh, what will make a name invalid? Okay. So maybe, for example, if I was not, uh, I was, I had not equated this thing, okay, and I add a space, okay, inside there, okay, this. Is the syntax that I could be getting. I think this is the same syntax that uh, Phoebe was getting. For example, I hope you guys have seen what I've done. Okay. So in this formula, I use the right names. But for example, I was typing this. I started typing the outside bracket, then at, then the bracket sale price. Okay. So let me add some. For example, I missed the spelling of price and had a double P. Okay, so what happens when I do that? It will always give me this error. Okay, so what is what are you supposed to do when you're working inside tables? You're supposed to go to whatever the two cells that you're working on. Just press the equal sign, go to the first cell that you want to first cell that you want to divide, add, subtract, maybe add, divided by the other one. Okay. Okay, so just do that and press OK. You won't find any error. But if you decide that you want to type them on your own, you might find that you're getting, uh, maybe you even miss something, okay? Even if you put in a space in between the words, you'll still give. Because now this Excel will look for this market retail price with that, okay? So let, let's see, okay? See, this is market retail prices with that dash, okay? And my formula is giving me an error, okay? So what happens when I go and change? Uh, okay, it doesn't accept, but maybe I could just go on and change this one and uh, maybe put in a, a space in there, okay? So when I do that, you'll find that that space has been updated here, okay? This is not the case. So, uh -huh. Pardon on the formula, please. I hope uh, I have been able to repeat that, um, Ezekiel, and you're now, now good, okay? So because that was part of the formula, okay? I, wanted to, I thought you guys are finding other errors, but uh, since that is the case, nobody has found a name error, a value error, or an any error. I would like us first to go first to the formulas and see which are these type of errors that we have. Remember, as I had said earlier, we have so many types of formulas that we can go through, but you can only go through a number uh, of them in which uh, we found important and are used from day on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. So are you guys okay up until that point? If I go to formulas, is there any other question? Is there any question? Guys, I really have, I want you to ask questions so that we move faster because when we are all moving together, we move a little bit more faster. So I can see no question, I can see no hand up. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the formulas. So I'll ask you to just check because I, had, I don't think I have it or oh. I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen really? Are you still seeing the Excel or the PowerPoint? Are you guys seeing on your screen? Because I've opened the PowerPoint. Can these guys hear me? Hey guys, can you hear me? I think, uh, 
Hi guys, can you hear me? Uh, sorry guys, I'm, it's like I'm talking to myself. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's like my internet dropped a little bit. I'm fixing it. What happened? Okay, guys, I'm together. I'm still together with you. Just trying to 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 maybe fix something here. You can be re looking at your. You can be re looking at your table. Computer just froze while sharing. Guys, so uh, you can be, uh, I'm going to start on the table on formulas and function. You can open that page just to familiarize yourself with the with them uh with the arithmetic and comparison operators as i sort out my, my network Okay, I think now we are back online. Can you hear me?
Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you, you can mute one of the devices. Mute okay. one of the devices. Okay. One of the devices. Okay. I have, I have. I'm I'll probably to... mute the uh, laptop. Yes. Actually, I was just in the middle of sharing my screen. I think something happened. Okay. I'm very sorry for that. Sometimes uh, my machine just refused to to pick my my Wi-Fi connection, but um, that's unfortunate, and I do apologize. So guys, I was saying, I hope you have been able maybe just to go through the formulas and function. Uh, I'll go to the PowerPoint straight. Just to just to just to explain a little bit of, uh, on the on what we have on the first page. I hope you can see my my screen. Okay, guys, can you see my screen charts? You can just tell me in my chat box if you can see my screen. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So, there are different operators uh, and arithmetic and comparison operators when we come to, to Excel. So, the first sign we have is a plus sign, okay? So, we have a plus sign, which is an addition, okay? So, you can always add, like, how we have been doing A1 plus B1. What will it give you? Will give you a numeric value okay then there's a subtraction sign okay this is a sub negative okay it negates like a1 minus b1 okay then there's a multiplication sign that looks like an asterisk okay that is usually on the shift eight okay so on the above the eight you'll always, you'll always find the multiplication sign then there's the division sign which is a stroke. Oh, this is, is this a forward or a, a backward slash? Is this a forward slash or a backslash? Anybody who can see my screen so that I know we are together? The division sign. Is backslash. Correct. Yes, correct. So we have that. Then we have the equal sign, which now, when you equate two cells, maybe A1 is equals to B1, you'll always find that uh it it is a logical test it will either tell you true or false we'll get to put to practice but i just wanted maybe to show you this page so that uh so that when we go working you you will be, will be very confident on on the type of formula that we are using okay so these are just arithmetic uh and comparison operators okay so the not equal in excel uses two two signs like this the, the greater than and the uh the left the greater than and the less than okay sign like together all right so yes so that being said i'll go back now to my excel workbook and go ahead to and use the signs i'll just take some i'll just pick some maybe some random data maybe we can use what we had if because typing it might take a little bit of time and you're quite straight of it. So I'll just take a few, a few samples, like I've just taken the first four columns and put it under my formulas tab, okay? This is just for the basic operators. I'll come down here and paste. Okay, so we started with the first basic operator. We said is a plus sign, okay? So for plus sign, plus addition, okay? Plus, we said this one just works the normal way. If I want to add these two columns, this and this, I'll just press equal inside the cell, select that cell, then insert the additional add sign, which is a small plus, plus the next cell that I want. Everybody can try reviewing this as we do so that you get to know how uh, how to create a formula. Now, that is a formula. So, this this one way of using the operator or 
there is another way of we, we can now use the the formula okay so when you when you end when you press equal and type in something like sum okay and put in a bracket before that you will see that now you in excel there's a way in which the syntax is is entered so here we have number one and here we have number two so uh, if i want to sum two numbers i'll just select that number then after i select you see there's a comma that i'm supposed to input then it tells me now you have selected number one go ahead and select number two what happens when i try and select number three i can't do that because i've not entered anything for the second number so i can go ahead and select the second number and close sorry and select my second number here and close my bracket so what happens the answer should be the same because it's basically the same thing okay guys i hope you have seen how the syntax looks like when you always click inside it you'll get to see what the what the what the what the formula requires okay so that is for sum plus or plus then we'll go to subtraction what, what if yes what if click work in a comma error in a soma error which type of error like you know in shadow danger in the danger sign <laughs> danger when what have you done kindly may elaborate to me so that i know where the danger is coming from kindly go ahead so that we go together to put an operator operation sign mm -hmm. which is a uh, plus mm. you have you tried put, uh, you to use a formula uh -huh. Here, you type sum. in equals uh -huh. then sum yes you type in the word sum actually when you type in su for example if i and i just press equal and type su you'll always see all the functions that start with su so you can go to that you can always go to that uh, that uh, formula then just press tab when you press tab it will auto complete the formula for you for some very long formulas like substitute, you don't have to write substitute. Immediately it comes up, you can just uh, press tab and then go ahead and finish up with the, with the syntax. But now, because we are starting, we just use sum in which you can type because it's just three letters. You can type sum, remember. Um, all Excel uh, formulas, for you to know that your formula is working correctly, even if you type them in small letters and maybe do you do your calculation maybe of that and that the formula will now always be in caps okay so yeah so when you type equal sign maybe type in the word sum then press tab okay it will always uh auto auto correct your auto correct your your formula okay so that you go ahead and uh, put what the syntax demands okay so I hope you have, I have answered your question in in a correct way. Right. So subtraction the same thing. If I want to subtract these two cells, I just select the cell minus that. Okay. Subtraction we we don't have uh we don't have like uh the sum uh the sum function. So we, we just have to to use the sign. Same to uh multiplication. So for multiplication, just the same thing. If I want to multiply these two cells, I'll just go inside that cell, press the multiplication sign, which look like an erased asterisk, then times the cell, the other cell that I want. Okay. When I do that, I get an answer. So I don't know. For, for multiplication, you have the product formula in which you can use if you don't want to use the sign. So it will ask you which product, two numbers you want to have the product, then you you will just have uh, that and that should give you the same answer all right guys i hope you're together because these are just the basic operators you have not even started looking at the formulas themselves okay
Are we together up until that point before I maybe just show one logical one logical uh, value? Are we together? Are, are we able yes, to we're together. Yeah, well understood. Yes, okay. So these are arithmetic uh, operators, okay? At times you might want to now create to use a, a logical operator or something that gives you a logical value. For example, you want at each and every point, for example, because I think this most of these numbers are the same, but we just use them for demonstration. For example, I want to create to, to check if this value is greater than this value or if they are equal. Okay. So what happens? In this point, I'll just equate this value and then and then put an equal value, an equal sign to this other cell. What do you think my answer should be here? Anybody with an idea when I, I, I equate D7 to E7 and they are not equal? What do you think what do you think I should get as an answer? False. True, that's true. Yeah, false, it's very true because these numbers are not equal. Hence, I'll get a, a false. Okay, so this is just um, an operator in which you, you try to, to look at two things. So there are different types of operators. You can you can check uh, if it's greater than if they are same. Okay, so all these numbers it tells me it's true that this number is equal to this number. Something else that I forgot to mention, maybe and you have seen me do uh, as 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 I'm explaining these things. When you want to see where your formula comes from, you can always click the F two button, F N F two button to it will show you the precedence of the formula because at times. Your formulas might not be in the same place, maybe speaking from a different sheet and you want to know who, who, this cell, which formula does it implicate you. So you can always use the FNF2 button once you, or just go to the formula bar and click inside the formula bar. It will show you the two cells in which uh, they are now highlighted in a different color and uh, you will get, you'll get to see where the formula is coming from. So that's uh, the equal sign. Uh, I won't dwell so much on the rest because they just basically follow each other. Okay. So for example, if I wanted to check another one, if I wanted to check if cell B9 is greater than or uh, let's see first, if is it greater than this cell, it will tell me false because I if I was to, to check, these two things are equal. So I can check for if this number is greater than or equal to. That's how we use our greater than or equal to uh, in Excel. So it should give me a true because this number is, it fulfills one of the, one of the conditions. Okay. Is it okay, guys? Yeah. Okay. All right. These are very basic and uh, I don't think anybody should be having a challenge in terms of uh uh the basic operators okay so with that said i would like now to proceed to our our formulas and functions this was just the operators is there any question before i uh we start on our if formula is there any question Just click on to have if. Yeah, you can copy your data so that uh, I've just uh, left the original one here so that here I have the if. I'll just remove that. So you have checked the basic functions for, for Excel, uh, the basic operators, okay? So we are looking at some of the formulas that exist. If is one of the most important formulas that you'll encounter while you're working on an Excel because now this is uh it's a function that can automate some of the decision making in your in your spreadsheet. For example, uh huh, and just for for maybe uh this. I just don't do this. 
just want to show you a for example okay i want us to use the a function to check something okay so maybe you're scouting for a phone in which the market price okay is lesser than uh, the sale price okay are we together guys i want to know that you're together uh this is a case in point that i want to show, show you how we can use formulas okay like the if function okay so if usually has uh, i'll just display the syntax you can just type equal if okay if has three parts okay it has first the logical test what are you testing okay so after you tell excel what you're testing what do you want what is the value that you want after if whatever you're testing is true remember we have looked at what happens uh, for you to get a true answer those two things must be equal or the condition must be satisfied remember we used the condition of equal or greater than and it was equal so the condition was true okay so in this case our test thing is um our, our so problem uh find a phone want to find a phone whose market uh, retail price is uh, less than less than uh, the sales price column okay, the sale price so using the if function we we, we type if okay we check our syntax our syntax tells us the logical text the logical test remember our problem is to find a phone whose market price is less than the sales price so here i want to welcome ideas what do you think you guys what do you think should be our logical test what do you think should be our logical text test Any idea? I can't see anything on the chat box. So, what? Maybe. Yes, go ahead. What find a phone whose market price is less than sales price? The market retail price in column uh, if, uh -huh. You said the bracket will. will <laughs> after that bracket, you said mm. there. Mm. I can sell e e three. Correct. Let me can sign here less that's than. Right. Okay, that's very correct. D three. Then sell D D three. Yeah. Okay. So that is very correct. Thank you for your answer. Okay. So what is the uh? What what that this is our logical test. So for example, we want to test to check that if this market price, retail price is less than the sales price. So what value do we want to to see if it is true? Okay. So here we can have you can even have a text value. Okay. So you can just tell the person who is using or yourself you buy this phone. Okay. Otherwise, if that is not the situation. You can go ahead and reject. Okay. Then you close the bracket. So you can see that Excel automatically tells you that you can just buy this phone. Okay. Why we say you can automate a um, decision because now, for example, uh, before even moving on, we just go ahead and conditional format and say anything that is equal to to buy. Okay, we want it filled with a green text. Okay, so then we drag our formula down. Okay, so at a quick glance, we see how many phones can we buy. We can clearly see that you can buy six phones. Okay, 
Are we together? A quick glance, we, we already see that we can buy six phones and reject all the other offers as the sales price are not less than the market retail prices. Okay, so I will just want to go back a little bit uh, one more time because remember the if function is very important since it builds now to other functions that like we'll see a sum if, then sum ifs, then a count if, then count ifs. All right, so we'll have a sum if, a count if. Okay. All right, so I just want to ensure that everybody has gotten uh, first this point in which you have an if function, you have a logical test, then you have uh, what happens now if the logical test is met and it's true. For example, in this case, our market retail price is less than the sales price. What do you want to have? You want to have maybe a word, maybe buy, maybe reject, maybe do something, maybe add, add some prices, okay? Maybe this was an investor, okay? We can maybe it was the owner of the shop, okay? You want to anything that is less than the market price, you add to it some 10 shillings, okay? So we can also do that. Okay, so maybe I'll just copy that. All right. So here, instead of uh, this, I'll just say that amount. Anything that is less than the market price, maybe you want to to add to it, okay? You add to it some like a hundred shillings on top, okay? And otherwise, just leave it as just give me nothing, okay? You see now, this price is this market retail price is less than the sales price. That's why you have added some amount here. So if we drag our formulas down here, everything that we had seen, uh, you'll see with a buy. Here, everything will be added to it, 100 shillings, okay? If you wanted to make the prices equal between the sales price and the market price. The other thing you can do is subtract the difference between the two and add the difference to the market retail price. So those are some of the things that you can do very quickly when you're using the if formula. So it helps you to have a logical test uh, and then have a value uh, if true, and then for value if false, okay. John, were you able to do that, John Boro? Yes. Okay. So, guys. Uh, I want us to do a sum if. So a sum if, just from the name, remember we saw how to sum, right? We saw whatever, how the sum syntax looks like. It looks like that. Just number one, number two, okay? So you can sum anything, one, two, three numbers. Like you select the first number, select the second number, you select a range. Maybe I want to add, uh, maybe I want to add a range I just highlight everything here, okay? So that's a, a summing a range, okay? But now, we have a condition called sum if. So a sum if, it means you're summing if a certain condition is met, okay? You're summing if a certain condition is, is met. For example, uh, here, I'll just minimize this. Okay. We want to sum if I was to buy all these 20 forms, okay? If I was to buy all these, um, nine, there are 19 forms here, right? But I only want to sum the amount of and see if I was to buy everything that is written by, okay? And I'm using the market retail price. How much will it cost me? Okay. Are we together? So here I'm checking if I want to buy everything that is written by here and uh i want to see its sum on the i was to buy this this uh that is written by here i also buy this i also buy this but i don't buy anything that is written reject how much will it cost me okay this is what we'll do so you will sum if okay we'll just check how the sum is work 
sum if okay i want to sum if no the 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 syntax again changes a little bit okay so here you start with the range what do you want to sum what do you want to, to sum you so i'll just come here the range from which i want to sum is this okay so you can just highlight now at this point this range because you're using now a range we must lock it we must have absolute references so while you're there you just enter your f4 okay are we together because you want that range to remain fixed okay then what do you want to sum if you want to a certain criteria okay so here you can choose to type you can choose to 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 maybe just equate to a certain cell for for example for this we we'll just say we want to uh we want it to be summed if it's a buy option then what do you want to be summed this, this is what a sum range means what do you want to be summed you want to sum the market retail prices so for that also i'll give it an okay so when i press okay so if i was to buy all the phones okay I just want to format this into a good, nice looking number. If I was to buy all the phones that I chose here, I will need 52,000. Okay. So if, you, and then you can just confirm that by adding one by one. So if I was to add this, I've added this. I've come and add this. Added this. And added this. And added uh, this again. All right. So you see, it's the same number, but now very quickly we are able to sum using some uh, some certain some certain criteria. So I'll repeat this formula just to for us to get the syntax. Okay. So sum if. We want to sum if on this range that we have created. Remember, we created a, a like a buy and a reject list from these 20 phones that we have here. Now we said we want to sum the whole amount of the phones. If if we were told, okay, you have now gotten the phones that you can buy, how much do you need? Okay. So here what do you do? You select your range. Okay. In a form. Then you go to your criteria your criteria should be either uh, whatever you want maybe the buy okay in that okay and then what do you want to be summed maybe i want to sum the market retail price okay and you just show that my formulas are well locked then okay then i just copy the formatting as we had said earlier that's how you can quickly copy the formatting any question up until that point Oh now I go to some ifs. Hello Kennedy. Yes, go ahead. I, I have one request. Okay. La, la, let's, la, if, if you can take an example of the brand alone so that uh, I fully understand now if you are working with the brand alone uh, and you want to get the sum if of LG phones only. Okay. So yes. if you wanted to work with the, uh okay. So that means we'll have to, maybe you want to buy only a phone known as LG. Okay. Let's copy that so that... Uh, you for that question so we want to sum if if the phone is just an lg okay so uh we'll use this i'll just use the sum if first so that i don't confuse you but we'll use it in the sum if and check uh in the in a now in our sum ifs if it again gets to the criteria of uh, our buy criteria okay so if at all i just wanted to know in this list okay what is the total sum of, of the LG phones, either using the sales price or using the market price, okay? So here I can just go ahead and do a sum if, okay? 
So I can sum if, what do I want to sum if? I want to sum if the brand, okay? Because now LG is under that brand, okay? Just use that. Okay, now I'll just 24. What do I want to sum if the criteria now becomes LG? Okay, now what do I want to sum? I'll just use the same market retail price. I'll, I'll highlight everything in that column and then I'll just lock my price. Okay, so what happens? I get to see that the value of LG phones in this first 20, uh, first 20 or oh, first 19 phones is just. 47,531. Okay. And if you if you're keen enough and you just go select all the LG phones, and uh, I think there's no other LG, you'll just get Excel usually gives you a summary down here. I don't know if you guys can see down here. Can you see where I'm highlighting? Excel usually gives you a summary down here, which is for 7,531. Okay. So that was just one condition. We use the by condition, okay? So guys, I have two things that I want you to do, okay? One. Before we move on, uh -huh. must we lock the cells? Uh, it is usually a good practice, not necessarily, but for example, uh, let me show you why I usually use it as a good practice you see here oh sorry for example here right i had my my cell like that right maybe i also want to see another brand like uh which one uh name it s asus right maybe i wanted to see asus i just come copy my asus here and then drag down my formula okay with this, once I have locked my cells, I'm sure that I'm still getting the correct answer from the same ranges, okay? But what if I had not locked them? It will be a problem because now all this will have shifted to C3, this one to C22, maybe this one to E3, and this one to E22, not giving me the actual range that I want to, to sum from. So if I have a list of, uh, maybe if you guys can remember how you are creating a unique list, Okay, I just come copy here. I can copy here everything. All right. Remember how we said we can create a unique list to just go to our data ribbon, uh, go to remove duplicates. Okay, then uh, cont I'll just continue the current selection. Remove duplicates. My data doesn't have headers. Okay. So I only remain with nine types of phones. Okay. So if at all I drag down this formula, I'm pretty sure that whatever I'll find here is the correct value. That's why I chose to, I choose to lock my, my, my ranges. Okay. Remember, if you are in a table, you don't need to lock any range while you are, while you are referring to it because it already has a structured table. It will always check through the whole column. But since here we are using a range and not a structured uh, table, you will always need to lock uh, your ranges. Uh, that's a good practice. Thank you for. So I hope uh, I have been able to answer that question. Correct. Yes. All right. So I want now us to use. Um, I want you guys. I want to see if you guys are keen and do two things. So I want to have two conditions. Okay. And my two conditions, I want to have them from a validation list, and those validation list must be unique okay so i have two challenges for you creating a, a a unique validation for two things so that we have two conditions and um and uh and using them in the sum if so one i want us to to use this okay just do it for you but follow through so i want to have two conditions i want to have brand okay and i want to check if the if the if the if the if it's a buy or reject condition okay okay so i want to test this condition i want to sum everything using these two criteria one should be the brand and 
one and the other one it should either qualify for my buy or reject criteria so here i come copy this names i'll copy all of them okay that's one so i can remove my duplicates i'll just remove my duplicates okay okay so i remain with 10 uh, unique values or names okay also here i know i have two names but i'll just copy all of them and then remove duplicates for anyone who might not have seen how we do it remove all the duplicates there okay so that i only have two uh, uh two names okay so let me just put my sum if here so i want us to create a validation here now for brand from that list and a buy reject option validation so here how do i create a validation i'll just go uh, to my data validation then use a list because now we have a, a unique pre-existing list that we've just created here select all the phones okay then now i have the validation for phones i'll choose maybe lg here i'll go to the the two options now the buy reject option now from the same list okay now once i have this i'll now go ahead and build my formula okay so here i want remember here we just did a sum if you can remember clearly our sum if was just checking if that would uh, the total buy okay if you were to buy all these things that we had in our condition here or the buy or reject how much will it cost us okay. so it gave us fifty two thousand. okay so we go ahead now we want to check per brand I want to buy all the LGs that are here, but the LG must have a certain condition written by. So if two LGs are in the buy option, then give me the score.